Hi everyone, my name is Zach and in this video I show you a commented time lapse on how I created this turtle sculpting and at the end of the video you also get a scene analysis and a quick analysis on how I created the procedural shaders for this final rendering. Click the timecode in the video description if you want to jump directly to this time lapse. This time lapse video including this blend file I added as bonus content to my latest video training Mastering Sculpting. This is a comprehensive video training explaining you basically everything you need to know about sculpting in Blender in over 60 video tutorials with a total running time of about 12 hours. So if you want to learn sculpting or if you want to push your sculpting skills to the next level, then this video training is for you. Check out the product page on my website for more info, the link you find also in the video description. For this sculpting here, starting from a cube to a final shaded model, I needed about six and a half hours. And I also want to mention that this design here is heavily inspired by a concept art by Sergei Vasniev, if I pronounce his name right. The link to this image you can also find in the video description. So all credits to him for this awesome design. For this sculpting I've known that from the beginning on I wanted to create this static pose. That means I wanted to sculpt a pose model and I know that I only want to see it from one particular angle. That means all the details on the other side I did not sculpt as you can see on the back here. So I saved a lot of time by only sculpting the stuff we can see from the camera perspective. And one cool little side note here, this 3D rendering of this turtle was featured in issue 104 from the 3D Artist magazine and as far as I know also in one issue of 3D World magazine. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, without further blah blah, let's finally get started. So as usually I start with a subdivided cube, extrude a few things here and shape the basic shape here. So I want to create a base mesh from which I can start on. For the limbs I used a simple edge with a skin modifier and a subsurf modifier on it, which is pretty easy to control because we only have this one edge we have to adjust here. The same thing I used for the fingers as you can see. And as you also can see, nothing is really connected here. For the armor on the back, I just created this plane and added thickness with the solidify modifier. Now I add legs here, same thing as before, with a skin modifier and a simple edge. And then I applied all the modifiers and increase the resolution a bit and then in sculpt mode with dynamic topology I start to create the, the rough shapes. Here at the beginning I also join the arms with the body with the boolean operation. For this you can either use the sculpt tools add-on or the bool tools add-on. The links to these add-ons you can find in the video description. I also use the speed sculpt add-on from time to time in this video. It's a paid add-on which is pretty useful with some extra cool tools which you can use for sculpting. Check out the video description for more info. Yeah, I hide the arm with H, then you can draw a box around the arm which is pretty useful if you just want to quickly hide something which is in the way. Then with the snake hook brush or the grab brush you can easily adjust the pose and the overall proportions of your model. Now I also join the legs to the, the body with the boolean operation and with a quick remesh operation in the sculpt tools add-on I adjusted the overall resolution of the object so I have a consistent resolution for adding the one detail level which I'm on at the moment. So as you can see the resolution is still pretty low but I try to sculpt on this model as long as I can with uh, low resolution to get the main shapes right, which are the most important shapes for the overall look of this creature. And since I'm using this concept art as reference, um, I know from the beginning that I want to sculpt this creature as a post sculpting. So I don't want to use this for production later on. This should just be one image. 
So I adjust the camera perspective here, as you can see. For the rod, I also use this skin modifier technique. So a simple edge with a skin modifier on it and a subsurf modifier. With a few cuts in between, I can change the flow of this um, rod here. And now I use a cool tool from this paid speed sculpt add-on, um, which is called Quick Pose. There you can mask one area and then draw an armature inside and quickly add this armature. And this way, as you can see, I easily can pose the arms here. Certainly you can also do it by simply adding an armature object. So you don't need this add-on in order to do this. So as you can see, according to the camera perspective and to the concept art, I adjusted the pose of the arms. Then it's important that after you pose this, you have to apply the armature modifier. Here I added a lattice object. This is an also a very cool and easy way to quickly pose and adjust the proportions of your model, especially if you want to rotate or scale something. As you can see, then I also applied this. And in this way, you can adjust the pose. And it's important, as mentioned, to apply this, because if you don't apply all these things you've done here with armature and the lattice, then you can get some errors while sculpting with dynamic topology. So if you're done with posing, apply this, and then you can go on with dynamic topology sculpting. Here with some modifier tricks, with the shrink wrap modifier or the snapping tools, you can easily create this armor and the solidify modifier to add the thickness. And as you can see, since the armor is covering most of the body, I don't spend much time on sculpting the muzzles and so on on the body itself in the front. So here I now adjust the fingers according to the new position of the hands. So and since we are using the skin modifier technique, it's super easy to adjust the finger position. Then let's adjust the hands here a bit. So at this stage, you can see everything is still really rough. We have no details on the fingers and not much details on the body itself. So this is still like creating the, the most important shapes here. Now I also add this quick pose armature to the legs to adjust the legs here. And as you can see, I also scale the legs a little bit in a moment because I noticed that the leg is a little bit long here. So I just scaled the upper leg a bit. Then let's do the same thing for the other leg here. And I also always check the camera perspective to see if this pose and in general the proportions are looking okay from the camera perspective. So well, let's just add a few more little details here. And also, I just sculpt the things which we can see from the camera perspective. Since I don't want to do any turntable or stuff like this, I just want to have this static rendering. Don't waste your time sculpting things which are on the other side. So as you can see, always I adjust the proportions if I notice that something is not looking right. Also take a look from different angles from time to time to see if this is looking good. The toes I pull out using the snake hook brush, as you can see. And then after this, using the crease brush and the snake hook brush and also the clay stripes brush, I adjust this whole thing. If you have very thin areas, you can use the inflate deflate brush to make this thicker. This is very useful to fix some stuff. Now here I started working on the armor. I mainly use the crease brush and the clay stripes brush. And I also tried a lot with the curve settings here. And yeah, mainly I just draw some creases and some sharp clay stripes to get this interesting looking shape. But yeah, nothing too fancy here. I just played around and see how this works.
Also, I have symmetry on in this case because it yeah, speed up the whole process. And also all these shapes I add here are pretty random, I would say. Just according what I could see on the concept art, I just added these weird shapes. And overall, this armor looks pretty organic still. So it's not too sharp and too clean. And this also made it easier because sculpting hard surface in Blender is pretty hard to do. So now I increase the resolution here and um, clean up the edges with the crease brush and maybe the pinch brush. And yeah, oh, yeah. Sadly, I forgot to record half an hour of the sculpting process on the armor here. So you can see we have all over the place a little bit more details. But yeah, in general, it's not much interesting stuff I done there. Then I have noticed I have this hole here. So I needed to fix that in order to go on with the sculpting. And yeah, here you can see, for example, I use the inverted crease brush to add these sharp edges. And then with the smooth brush, I smooth these areas. Then here again, I use the clay stripes brush to add these stripes. And with the crease brush, I added the creases in between. And after this, I smoothed out the whole area and then yeah, add some final details here and there. Then since some of these rectangles on the armor are pretty distorted, I also adjusted this using um, the grab brush, for example or the snake hook brush, as you can see here. The grab brush is pretty cool if you already sculpted a lot of details and just want to change the overall proportion or the position. Here I disabled uh, the symmetry and added these creases here and there to add some damage to the armor. Here again with the lattice modifier, I change some proportions. And the lattice modifier is pretty quick also if you have a lot of polygons already. So I really can recommend this. Here I also use a pretty interesting trick. I want to have this second line. And here I draw a mask using the mask brush. And then I can pull out the upper area and don't affect the lower area, which is pretty useful here. So use a mask brush if you want to protect some areas which you have sculpted on and don't want to change. So as you can see, I start always with a rough shape and then go more and more into details. Down here, I add this strange cloth thing, just a simple circle extruded, a subsurf modifier on it. Here I add some simple um, circles for the knee protectors. And here on this object, I added the multi-resolution modifier and a solidify modifier to add thickness. And with the multi-res modifier, we can also sculpt on this without destroying the topology, which we are doing with dynamic topology. And this way I can easily use a modifier still and sculpt on this thing here. Here I adjusted these knee protectors and also with dynamic topology, I sculpted this very simple shape, but somehow it looks pretty cool. Then I duplicated this knee protector with a linked duplicate. So on both sides, we have the same object. Then with some curves, I added this ropes here. So in the curve settings, you can enable under fill the full method and under geometry bevel this a bit and then you can create this ropes using simple curves.
Now we want to sculpt on the armor on the back. And since we just can see a very little part of this armor, I only sculpt it on this little area here. So if we take a look from the back, the whole armor looks pretty flat. So then we have this additional clothing flying around down here. Same technique as before for the main claws. Simple planes extruded with a solidify and a subsurf modifier on it. And then you have this easy to edit shapes and a little bit thickness there as well. I duplicated them around in edit mode directly. And yeah, with these shapes, I wanted to add this organic flow that this looks a little bit more interesting, like this character is moving at the moment. Up here, I added additional claw things and colored them in red later on. So I have this little detail to catch the viewer's attention or to lead the, the viewer's eye more to the head area. So now let's get more into detail on the body. I start to join the fingers to the body using a Boolean operation. And then I sculpt at least on the parts which we can see from the camera perspectives. So since you can't see the tip of most of the fingers except the thumb, I don't sculpt it any details there. So for the nail of the thumb, I used the snake hook brush and created this pointy nail there. And as mentioned, since we don't see the tips of the other fingers, I don't create the nails for the other fingers. So now let's add all the other fingers to the main body and connect them. With H again, I hide it the thumb area, which helped me to sculpt on the other finger. And let's do the same thing on the other hand. With Alt B, you can set this clipping border, which is pretty useful if you just want to sculpt on a particular areas, like on the hands, and then the rest of the body will be hidden, so you don't have that in the way anymore. And here on the other hand, I also created only the, the nail on the thumb. Here I am um, separated one of the part from the rod, which will be the, the clothing, the bands later on. And I also added this simple cylinder for the arm protectors. So solidify modifier, subsurf modifier, simple stuff. So here I noticed that there's some space between the armor and the body. So with the snake hook brush or the grab brush, you can adjust this quickly. So let's add the details to the protectors here. Simple stuff using the crease brush and the clay stripes brush again. And for these dots, I use a simple um, sculptor brush. And with the flatten brush, I flatten these dots. So we have this yeah, kind of bold thing there. And I always check the camera perspective if you still can see some areas which are not detailed. So here I separated the arms and the legs and the head. I used the crease cut from the sculpt tools add-on, which is pretty useful. 
And this I did since I want to increase the resolution on the single parts, like on the head and on the arms. It's better to have a smaller object, then you can go higher with the resolution instead of sculpting on the whole body. So in this case, it was better for me, so I can easily adjust uh, the, the details on the head, then go over to the arms and sculpt there, and everything was pretty smooth then. And since the body is covered with the armor, I could delete some parts of the body which I don't need, and in this way I also saved some polygons. So with the crease brush here I add some scales and other details. On the top I add the details with a clay stripes brush. So you can see the clay stripes brush and the crease brush are the two main brushes I use here. And yeah, here just some random details, some random scales, and again only on the areas which we can see from the camera perspective. As you also saw before, I added the eye as separate objects. Never add the eyes with the boolean to the body because then you can't sculpt the eyelids and stuff around the eye because then you would deform the eye. So always keep the eye separate, just like in real life. So here I increased the resolution for the arm, added some details. And since this um, character has this very uneven surface, it looks pretty cool already if you just draw some clay stripes over there and smooth this a bit. So I added this veins to the arm so it looks even stronger. Yeah, here I also added some details to the arms and the hands. And the same thing for the feet and the legs here. And also, as you can see, I varied the details a bit. So I have the scale area and then I have these lines. So the whole thing looks a little bit more interesting and has different spots to look at. So it doesn't look always the same in every area. This makes it more interesting for the viewer to look at this image. Certainly I don't sculpt it under the knees. Certainly I don't sculpt it on the knees because there we have these knee protectors. So. Yeah, we couldn't see the details in. But we can see the upper legs a bit, so we have to add some details here as well. Yeah, now let's finalize this thing with a few more little details. Then I sculpted the bends on the rod here. I tried some different things, but at the end I just used the clay stripes brush and the crease brush to create this. And I added very strong creases as you can see so that we can see the wooden rod in between the, the bends here. And yeah, it worked pretty well. So the final thing here is the wooden rod. Here I used a crease brush mainly to add these lines to the wood and also the clay stripes brush a bit. And then, yeah, we have this very easy but cool looking rod. Some final close stripes here and there for the folds. And that's it. All right, now let's take a quick look on the procedural shaders and how I set up the whole scene here. If you want to learn how to create procedural shaders from scratch, take a look in my latest video training, Mastering Sculpting. There I have a full chapter about this topic. 
More infos about this product you find on my website. The link is in the video description. So first of all, let's take a look at the scene setup. Down here, let's press Shift Z to render inside the viewport. And now let's take a look at the lighting setup. As you can see, I have two area lamps here, one from the back, which is the most important one, I think, because if I turn this off, you can see this nice rim light is gone. And this rim light is, I think, one of the most important effects to make this look professional. And also take care that this lamp is bright enough so that we have this very nice sharp rim light. Also this rim light helps us to read the shape better and also if you have a background this rim light separates the character from the background. And also as you can see down here I tinted this in blue a bit. Then the second lamp is tinted in yellow a bit and is shining from the side and yeah that's all. If I turn this off, you can see everything is black except the ground is also lighting up our model a bit. And one important thing here, I also turned down the strength of the background to zero. So the background is just black and is not lighting up our scene here. Then you can see I have this checkerboard pattern in the background. That's because under the render settings, I enabled transparent under film. That means we can render this image with transparent background so we can replace the background with any image we like. And what you also can see is that the floor is transparent. You can see I have this plane here, but we can only see the shadow. And that's because under the object data cycle settings, I enabled shadow catcher. That means we can only see the shadow which this plane is receiving. And also I have a very special shadow here because it's not the shadow from the lamps, it's an ambient occlusion shadow. So for the material of the ground, I set the shader to be ambient occlusion. If I use, for example, this simple diffuse shader, you can see I have all the shadows from the lamps. But in some cases, I don't like this, especially if I want to present this model in a nice way. So I use this ambient occlusion shader, then I have this more like a roundish shadow underneath the creature here. To control how large the ambient occlusion should be, you can go to the world settings, ambient occlusion, and here, with the distance value, you can control how big this should be. The smaller the value you can see, the smaller the shadow. Then under scene color management, I enabled Filmic Blender and use the base contrast here. If you want to learn more about Filmic Blender, just Google Filmic Blender. It's pretty awesome to get more realistic results, but I don't want to cover this in this video here. And to get a noise free result after rendering, you can go to the render layers and enable denoising. Okay, that's all for my scene setup. Now let's take a look at the procedural shaders here. So I used the principal shader to get this PBR shader as foundation. And then I just used a few procedural shaders here to get the color right. So what I did here is to use noise textures, this colorful noise textures in different sizes. As you can see, I changed the scale value. Then I plugged them into a color ramp, then it will be convert it into black and white. And then with these two handles, I can control the contrast basically. And then I use this black and white mask as a mixing factor for a mix RGB node. That means the one color is shown on the black parts and the other color is shown on the white parts, as you can see. Then I have this color here. And with the second noise texture, as you can see, we have much finer noise here, a bigger scale value here. I also use the color ramp plugged it in here with another color. In this case, I used the multiply blend method to get darker spots here. And then I have this very basic color. So my, my goal was here to just create this greenish color variations. So not everything has the same color. Then with the geometry node, I use the pointiness output, plug this into a color ramp. And then if I move the handles together, I can highlight all the creases and edges. So I get this kind of ambient occlusion shadow. And this again, I used as mixing factor to mix the black on top of this color here. So and this I use as base color for the principal shader. Then down here, similar things. I have a Voronoi texture for imitating something like scales. And up here, I have this very fine noise texture. Both of the things I multiply together with a mix RGB node. And this I used as height import for the bump node to get this bump map. And also I plugged it into the color ramp to get a roughness map. 
That means all the white areas will be rough and all the black areas will be very glossy, as you can see here. And yeah, if you put all the things together, we have this pretty simple but nice looking turtle skin here. In addition, I reduced the specularity. The standard value is 0 0.5, but it was a bit strong for me, so I reduced this. And also I used the subsurface scattering that the light is shining through the skin a bit. And here I used a value of 0 0.5 and for the radius I decreased the red, green and blue channel. And in this way we can control how deep the light rays should move into the skin. And if we set a higher value to the red value and lower value to green and blue, then the red rays will cast deeper into the skin. So the subsurface scattering effect is a little bit more tinted in red. And as you can see as subsurface scattering color, I used the same texture as for the base color here. So and if we take a look on the armor, it's exactly the same procedural shader. I just changed the colors here a bit. So I have this brownish tone. Also, I copied the same shader to the ward here and to the claws and yeah, just changed the colors and sometimes removed some of the notes I don't need. So it's basically all the same stuff, just colored a little bit differently. So as you can see with very simple techniques, you can color a dynamic topology model pretty quick. So and then I have the eyes here, which is super easy. So let's select the eyeball outside. As you can see, it's a pretty simple sphere with a little bit deformation in the front here. And I just put in glass shader with zero roughness on this. And then we have this eyeball inside here. As you can see also just a deformed sphere with two shaders, just two simple diffuse shaders with black color and orange. And in edit mode, I selected a few faces, select the certain material and then I hit assign. And then I can use two materials on one object. Yeah, and if I overlay these two spheres, the outside sphere is a little bit bigger than the inside sphere. Then we have this simple but nice looking eye here. So one last thing I want to mention here, if we take a look on the camera, we have this line with this cross here and this is defining the focus point. That means I have this sharp area and this area which is out of focus. That means we are defining the depth of field. And this you can simply do by selecting the camera. Then under display enable limits to see the focus point. And then under depth of field you can control the distance where the focus should be. And with the size here you can control how strong the depth of field should be. But don't overdo it then this looks like a miniature. If you want to go for this effect certainly increase the size here. So for finalizing this image, you can see the background is transparent. If you want to render this with transparent background and then edit this in Photoshop or other tools, then you can go to output, choose PNG, set the color depth to 16 bit and choose RGBA. A stands for alpha channel, that means the transparent background. Here I set the render samples to 256. And as mentioned before, I have the denoising enabled to remove the noise in the final render image. And now let's hit F12. Now let's head over to the node editor, switch to compositing nodes, click use nodes and backdrop. And now we have our render layer here. Let's press control shift left click on here to enable the viewer node. And now let's quickly add a background color press shift A, color alpha over node, put it here and we use the lower image input. And then you can see we have this turtle in front of the white background. And now we can change the color here to have a more gray background. And as you can see now with this rendered shadow, this looks like if the turtle is standing inside a studio or something like this. And if you now want to save this, press F11 to get back to the UV image editor. Down here, let's choose fewer node. Then hit F3 and then you can save this image. All right, guys, that's it with this video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned a few things. As mentioned at the beginning, if you want to learn sculpting or if you want to take your sculpting skills to the next level, check out my mastering sculpting workshop. And also I have some free pay what you want products on my Gumroad page with other sculpting time lapses and stuff like this. 
Also, at the moment, Sculpt January is running an event I run with a few friends. There you can basically create 31 sculptings in 31 days to improve your sculpting skills and you can win some cool stuff. I know January already started, but you can still join and at least do a few sculptings if you like. Check out the video description, there you find a link to the event page where you can find more info. Also, aside from sculpting, if you just want to improve your general 3D skills or digital 2D painting skills, you always can join weekly CG challenge. This is basically a two-week challenge where you can participate, make a cool rendering or digital painting according to the topic we provide and then you can win some very cool prizes. Check out weeklycgchallenge.com if you want to learn more about this. Also, if you want to keep up to date on the stuff I'm doing, subscribe to my newsletter or my social media. All the links you find in the video description. Thanks for watching. Uh, I mean, thanks for watching, and we see us in the next video. Goodbye.